We're tying the game changer fly. To start, we're gonna put in a 10 millimeter, 11 millimeter game changer shank in our vise and get our th a nice thread base down. Come in with your scissors and snip that off. You want to super glue it. These flies take about 20 to 25 minutes to tie, so you want it to be a very robust fly. I go back, make sure that that super glue is evenly distributed, and I have a nice solid base. For the tail, I'm using white marabou, and you can use any color marabou or feathers that you want. This is just going to match the overall coloring of the fly. Next, we're going to tie in some of the small Semperfly Game Changer Chenille. And this, this chenille is really cool because it naturally provides a taper. So on the, on the back shank, we just wrap it forward in touching turns and you want to stroke the fibers back to get a nice full body segment. Now we'll be doing this a bunch of times, so it's important to get this step right. And once you're close to the eye, come in with your thread, cross over the material a couple times and make sure that it's nice and secure. Pull it out of the way and cut off the waste material. Now stroke the fibers back and I like to wrap right around the head to make sure to get the fibers to lay back a little bit and get a nice strong finish on it. Now if you have a couple fibers hanging out to the front, it's not really a big deal. Um, it's just going to add to the overall fly. Come in, give it a whip finish. And this whip finish is a five or six turn, cut it off. You can cut off any little bit of fibers that are sticking around. And then once again, I add a little bit more super glue to it to make it a stronger fly. Add another shank and we're gonna start the exact same way. Because we have five shanks total or four shanks total plus a hook, we're gonna reuse the same small chenille from Semperfly. Let's get add a little bit of super glue. This will give the nice long taper right into the tail. And what this is representing is a bait fish that do tend to have a skinnier, longer tail section. So give it a whip finish, cut it, add your super glue. Then we're gonna add another section and this is a 20 millimeter section. The first one was 11, the second one was 15. Now, now we're on 20 and start the same way. This Semperfly Nano silk is really strong, which can allows you to get it really tight and really bind down the thread so you have a really nice strong fly. Lay down the thread body, come up to the tip, and then we're gonna touching turns, wrap the material around. And you can see how it starts to get a little bit thicker and you're getting to start getting a natural taper. And this is why we use really strong thread because you can bind down and the edges of some of these shanks are really sharp and they can cut your thread like that. So you can see it because I was so tight on the, the wraps that when I broke the thread, it didn't come undone, which is one of the reasons I really love this nano silk. Just all you gotta do is restart your thread, come in, give it a whip finish, add your super glue and you are good. You're back, back in the race and no loss there. Come in and trim off any little excess. Doesn't really matter, it's just more for visuals. It'll still fish the same. Now we're going to super glue it and then add the final shank, which is a 35 millimeter shank. And it's the same steps, just repeated over and over again. You know, this is a definitely one of those rinse and repeat patterns. And now we're using the next size up of the Game Changer Chenille. And you can really see that taper card is starting to come through, which is really cool that you gain this natural taper without having to do a bunch of trimming. Now I'd like to add a couple peck fins just for life of the fly um, and how it looks. You don't have to. It, I don't know if it affects the fishability, but I think it looks cool. So this is a little Brahma hen feather that I, I use a concave out on either side to, to represent some fins. You can use, um, partridge or any other small feather. I just think it gives it a cool, neat look. And if you're spending this much time tying a fly, honestly, I think it should look cool too. You know, if it's not, if you're going to catch fish, but you should also be able to impress your friends with it. Give it a check to make sure both sides are roughly the same. 
snip off that waste material. Be careful not to cut your thread. Come in and you can put super glue on either the thread or onto the head, just showing you a different technique to apply super glue. Whip finish and go ahead and give it a, a snip. This is probably the hardest part about this whole fly and that's attaching the tail to the actual fly. So on the hook, we're gonna let down, lay down a nice base of thread, come in and snip off the extra. And this is some wire that's supplied with the Semperfly Game Changer kits. And this is what at attaches the tail portion to the actual hook. Now, if you didn't want to use this wire because it could be a little thick, you can also use backing, you can use Power Pro, you can use monofilament, anything to create a little loop on the back. But this stuff is nice and strong, so it's a good way to, to tie in that tail. It gets a little finicky at times, but you just kind of got to get it in there, play with it a little bit, and then keep that tail section out of your way. And you want to wrap it all the way up. If I had a tailing hook on here, I would want to bend over the sections, but because there's no hook on the back, I'm not really worried about this wire pulling out. Snip off the extra, kind of bend that, that wire out of the way if you can. And then we're going to go ahead and, you know, finish up the body wrapping, making sure that wire doesn't cut the thread, a little tension there and take the take the thread all the way back. Now, because we're, we're being diligent about every other step, you wanna add super glue and then a couple wraps to make sure it's really kind of distributed through and you get a nice strong bond. Now this is a saltwater style hook because this is a more of a saltwater pattern that I'm tying, but you can use a barbless hook and tie on all the small shanks to create a more of a trout style. Now this is the biggest of the Semperfly Game Changer Chenille. And I like to stack it really tight, especially around the head. Feels like you're done. I like to try to get at least one more wrap in because you want a nice thick head because that's going to help push the water and cause the displacement and allow the fly to move. Come in and snip off the extra, sorry my fingers were in the way. And you get kind of this furry looking fly and just pull the, the fibers back, build up a small head. You don't have to go very far back. You just want it to <clears throat> a place for the thread to lie when you go into your whip finish and you super glue it. So come in and do a nice solid whip finish. Give it a good pull cut off the thread and add a, a tad bit of super glue. Now this fly could be fished just like this, <clears throat> but we're gonna add some eyes and we're gonna decorate the heck out of it so it looks more like a bait fish than just a white plain articulated bait fish. So first thing I do is I take some scissors and because the head's a little square at this point, I, I do a little bit of trimming I, I trim a little bit on the back section too, just to help on that taper. This is purely um, aesthetic. You don't have to do this. I just like to make the sections kind of flow into each other as much as I can. And a little trim, it only takes a couple minutes to do and you'll get there. I find long scissors, long bladed scissors really help for trimming these, but your your smaller ones will be fine. So I cut a little section out where I want the eyes to sit on both sides. And this allows the super glue to penetrate better and you get better eye adhesion. You notice I haven't finished trimming the head because I like to do that once the eyes are on. So I take super glue and put it right in the, the cutout for the eyes. Make sure you get a nice healthy amount in there because you want these to stay on. I use a bodkin to put it in place. And then once I'm satisfied where it is, I use the edge of the bodkin to push down. And what I'm trying to do is adhere as much of that super glue down deep 
and all over the eye for a nice strong adhesion. Now the second eye is a harder one because you gotta match where it sits to the first one. So on here, so what I like to do is put a really good close guess at where the eye sits and I drop it you know, on the fly, give it a little push and I rotate the fly around and I can see that I'm off a little bit. I need to move forward with the eye. So I move it up a little bit check check it there is that good not a little bit more and so just take your time with this and get to the point where you're happy and then push down with the bodkin to make sure it seals and you'll see what it does is it also pushes the fibers up and out so that's why i don't do the final trim until actually i have the eyes on and now here i am with the eyes on they're secure and ready to do the final trim and final shaping so come in with your scissors and just start giving it a haircut. Pretend you're in a barber shop and just do whatever looks good. Now you could spend literally an hour doing this, getting it fine tuned. Um, I'm just gonna do a rough cup here cause just get it into that rounded bait fish style head. And there it is. That is a all white bait fish that moves incredibly well. You can see that articulation. But let's, let's fancy it up one more bit by using markers. This is a gray marker. Um, a Sharpie works great. Just to add a little bit of contrast from the back. A little hot spot for some gills. Um, just take, take whatever time you want. Add a little bit more color. And there you go. You have a fully tied game changer. Look at that articulation. It's fantastic. Thank you.